can you even believe that it's almost 2022? I can't. It's it's so weird because 2020, you know, once we hit March, like 2020 moved pretty darn slow. I feel like because we were like so, you know, all over the news, like we were like watching news 24 seven and we were wanting to know what was going to go on all the time. And we were, you know, oh, it's just two weeks to slow the spread and like all of this stuff that we were like time moved much slower in 2020. But I feel like 2021 has been like a blip. Like it has been the quickest year of my 35 years of life. And I honestly cannot believe that we're at 2022. Like we're, we're here, we're knocking at the doorstep. We're knocking at the door. We're knocking at the door of 2022. With that being said, almost always, every single year on my channel, I see a peak and um, you know a spike in my analytics of people who are wanting to start a YouTube channel or even wanting to kind of you know get back on the horse, if you will, because I understand that sometimes we start a YouTube channel and life gets in the way, or we have this idea, but we never follow through with it. So I'm gonna do a video I've never done before, and that's basically telling you things I wish I would have known when I was starting my YouTube channel or I wish I would have figured out a little bit quicker so that if you're starting your channel in 2022 or revamping a channel that you may have started in the past you don't have to waste any time and you know these things from the get-go so if I were starting a YouTube channel in 2022 I would want to know these things first and foremost Hey, howdy, hey, y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, what's up? My name's Jessica Stansberry, and I am pumped that you are here. I am like so passionate about helping you make a living creating content on the internet. Like, I love that so much, and if you love that too, you're at home here. So go ahead and hit subscribe. I have been on this platform for a minute. I've actually been on YouTube since 2016, when I put my first video on the tubes and honestly have been rocking and rolling ever since. But oh my Lord, if I would have known some of the things I know now, then I feel like I could have grown so much quicker than I did. And I wouldn't have had to like learn things as much of like in the hard way as I did, you know? So I put together a list of 10 things I hate about you. No, uh, tell me you're a 90s kid without telling me you're a 90s kid, right? I put together a list of 10 things that I wish I would have known when I was starting a YouTube channel. So I can kind of give you like that big sister advice, you know, like if I were starting a YouTube channel in 2022, these were the things I wish I would have known. One, there is no need to focus on your gear. You do not need a fancy camera. You do not need any of that. Honestly, I think at this point, it's like a mission of mine to make sure that you understand this because so many people get started on YouTube or start to do like the research phase of getting started on YouTube. And that's where they get stuck is like, what camera, what, you know, microphone, what microphone, what, you know, lights, like whatever. But honest to Pete, that's not important. You need to have decent enough quality. You need to have decent enough lighting and you need to have decent enough sound. Somebody will always find something to pick you apart for. It's so funny because a couple of videos ago, I did a uh, video where I had my microphone, this microphone, which is not what I'm recording with right now, but I had it like right here in my face through the whole video. And I had comments that were like, we don't like it that the microphone's in your face. And I'm like, okay, I, I get that. You know, I didn't really like that it was in my face either in the video version. So in the next video, I kind of put it like right here where you couldn't see it, you know? And the audio was butter off of this, but I do really like the audio off of this too. That This is not the point. The point is people told me they did not like the microphone in my face, but also it made the audio amazing, right? Then I put it just out of camera shot. So it, you know, it's still getting my audio. It's still doing a good job. Um, and I wanted to try that out with my filming setup to see if I like that better than like this mic or a top of camera mic like this one. And um, 
it I think it sounded better especially than a top of camera mic there was way less echo because my office is a little bit echoey because I film talking straight into a window and there's not really a good solution for me right now for that but I film this and I'm like, oh, this sounds great. And then somebody's like, oh my gosh, your video, your audio would sound so much better if you pulled the mic close to your face. And I'm like, you win some, you lose some, right? Like, like we, can't, we can't win with this because one person's telling me not to have the mic in my face and one's telling me to. Somebody's gonna like that you have really bright, airy videos. Somebody think, is gonna think you need dark and moody. Somebody is gonna think you're echoey when someone else th thinks you're fine. You are going to get comments that are like, oh, the audio is bad or oh, the video is bad or whatever. But the thing about YouTube is just to get started. And if I were starting in 2022, I would not worry, not one single iota, that's a Southern phrase, about my gear. I would pick up my phone and I would make sure it was kind of close to my face and I would set myself in front of a window and I would call it a day. And if I really needed, you know, a little bit better audio, maybe the phone has to be a little further away and I am echoey, I would get a plug-in lavalier mic like this one. This one right here could plug into my phone in theory and I would be done. So don't put so much time and effort into worrying about the gear that you need, the money you need to spend to get started because it's actually not true. You just need the phone you have in your pocket, the camera that's in, on that phone, the microphone that's built into that phone, and you need to go forth, right? Like you just need to go do it. The next two things I wanna mention that I wish I would've known actually contradict themselves. <laughs> like they contradict each other, but we're gonna roll with it, okay? So first and foremost, I wish I would've known, and I want you to know that, especially when you're just starting on the platform, it is okay to throw spaghetti at the proverbial wall. Like throw proverbial spaghetti at the proverbial wall. That is okay. It is okay to test the water. It is okay to do a little bit of this and a little bit of that and kind of see what you enjoy doing, what people really kind of resonate with and what YouTube wants to pick you up for. Sometimes we don't totally know what we wanna do until YouTube's like, hey girl, we like those kind of videos. Do more of them, right? So it is okay to throw spaghetti at the wall. Now I've said this in a few other videos, but I don't mean all over the place. When I say throw spaghetti at the wall, I mean, you know, pick a, a pseudo niche, like pick a broad niche and then throw spaghetti at the wall within that. So let's say it's gonna, your niche is gonna be gaming, for instance. You may end up in the long run, you may be a Minecraft gamer. Like you may be a Minecraft YouTube gamer person. But for now, you may wanna play all the games right? And see where things flush out, what you enjoy doing, what you enjoy putting together, what your viewers enjoy, what YouTube wants you to do, right? It could be that you want to be in the education space like I am. You want to be a marketer, you know, you want to talk about marketing. So go ahead and throw spaghetti at the wall within that niche. Teach about Instagram and Pinterest and Facebook and YouTube and podcasting. You may end up niching down to something like YouTube or email marketing, but for now it's okay to throw some spaghetti at the wall. And then the next thing that I want to tell you is that once you figure out which spaghetti sticks, you need to niche down quickly and specifically. Niche down as quick as you possibly can once you kind of figure out what that is and stick to it. This is one of the biggest mistakes that I made in my YouTube career and continue to make. <laughs> Like, sorry guys, but it is. Sometimes it is really hard to say, this is the lane I'm in and I am not going to veer out of that lane at all. But that is really where the magic happens. If you will notice people who have grown exponentially in a short amount of time or have really like went viral, it's because they stick inside of a certain niche. And so once you have thrown your spaghetti at the wall, pick a niche, pick a specific you know, lane you wanna be in and go with that. Don't then continue to throw spaghetti because you're gonna confuse the algorithm, you're going to confuse the viewers you do have, and it's going to feel like disjointed, right? Like it's not gonna feel like everything fits together. Some of you watching may want to go into um, an entertainment niche rather than an education niche. 
So you can probably kind of skip this one because this is more for my peeps who want to go in the education space like I'm in. If you're doing any type of education on YouTube, you're teaching anything, you're teaching hand lettering, you're teaching journaling, you're teaching tips on productivity, you're teaching YouTube, you're teaching audio, you're like whatever, okay? Like you're teaching whatever. If you're teaching anything, you will find a lot of success in going after search-driven titles and videos and things that are really going to get found in search and then therefore get picked up in the algorithm and so on and so forth. But I really wanna encourage you to build a community in addition to that. That is again, one of the biggest mistakes that I made in the beginning and really until the last few years. See, if you build an audience who only came there because they were searching for something specific and then they don't need or want your next video, you're gonna be really disappointed with your view numbers and things like that and with the fact that, you know, the same people aren't coming back over and over to watch your videos, which is, you know, not a great thing. So what you really wanna do is try and build community in addition to being found in search. That is not easy but it is doable. And you know, my best advice there is to encourage community in your comments, encourage community um, by like joining your channel, encourage community by sending them somewhere else, like a free Facebook group or your Instagram or listening to your podcast, but encourage community, encourage them to stick around because you're gonna see the most benefit from that and so will they. They will want to come back and watch every single video. I actually want to do a better job of this and it's very hard for me um, because I went so many years just focused on search, you know? but it's something I'm actively working to do. And one of the ways that I wanna do that is by really reviving my vlog channel and you know, taking you guys behind the scenes more than I already do in my life and my business. And one of the ways I'm doing that is by doing Vlogmas. So if you're not watching my Vlogmas vlogs on my vlog channel, it's called Jessica Stansberry Vlogs. Take a shot every time I said vlog. I'll make sure I link it below so you can find it super easy. But build a community in addition to search if you are doing some kind of teaching on YouTube because that's really where the magic is gonna happen. Don't just create for your audience. Create for you too. Now I've heard several creators say this, specifically creators who do this for the art of it, right? Um, I think the first person I heard say it was Sarah Dietschy, and she said, one for you, one for them, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, and that's how she like views her YouTube channel, is she's gonna do one video that she really just loved to do, and one that is going to do well in search and do well for the algorithm and all of the things, and that is okay. I recently heard Peter McKinnon say something really similar. I don't remember how he said it, but something super similar, like make sure you're creating content that's for you as well, because we can get stuck in this, right? Like I love to create content. By the way, maybe that's like a sub thing. I don't have this written on my list of things I want you to know, but maybe that's like a, a like an asterisk, like a sub, a sub genre, a sub point. <laughs> and that is, y'all, if you don't love creating content, you won't stick to it. So you have to find a fine balance of like what you love to create. Um, and if you get into it and you don't love it, then don't do it. Like you have to love it. And so for me, I absolutely love to create content. It's one of my favorite things I love to edit. I actually, I love to film, I love to edit, I love to you know, come up with the ideas. All of that makes my heart happy. But if all I ever do is just throw like one, two, three, four, five tutorials at you or whatever, then I don't feel fulfilled in you know what that looks like. And so recently I did a video where I was just kind of like sitting down and editing with my new MacBook Pro for the first time. And I kind of vlog style showed y'all the difference in my old MacBook Pro and my new one. And that video's analytics show that it did super well and it was also one I absolutely loved creating. But but historically and um, you know systematically and formulaically, that one probably shouldn't have done well. So anyway, my point is don't just do content for search. Don't just do content for the people. Don't just do content for the algorithm. Do content for yourself. Stuff that you really enjoy doing, even if it's like mixed in with the stuff that is for other people. 
All right, we're on number six. I have 10, remember. We're on number six. I got a comment the other day on one of my videos, and I believe it was that MacBook Pro one. And um, it's from one of y'all that watches my videos pretty often, and she said, oh my gosh, I wish I could afford this, number one. And then she said, it's such a slow go making any money from YouTube. And I said something about AdSense in the comment. And I don't wanna pull it up because I don't, you know, I didn't get permission to share that comment. But I commented back and I was like, don't put all your eggs in the AdSense basket. You should really be trying to make money outside of AdSense. Like it doesn't just need to be about AdSense. And I think that is such a, a key, a key thing that people get wrong when they are starting their YouTube channels is like the mecca, the end goal, the thing we're working towards is to get monetized by AdSense and by YouTube. And it's just not true. I, I will say this is one where I kind of put something that I definitely did know when I was getting started in the list, but I wanna make sure that you understand it because I never went into YouTube with the intention to even be monetized. Like I didn't care. I didn't like, that wasn't the purpose of my YouTube channel. The purpose of my YouTube channel was to grow my brand and my business. Like that's why I was starting it. And so AdSense was never even at the forefront for me. I was telling somebody the other day that I think I made like a thousand dollars a month from AdSense for like three months before I even knew it. Like I didn't even know that that was going into my checking account until like one day I was checking everything and I'm like, oh wow, I make a thousand dollars a month from AdSense. Like what in the world? That's like not pocket change, you know? But all of that to say, if I were starting my channel in 2022, if I'm telling you things that I hope you'll know from the get-go, it is to stop focusing, don't focus, like to remove the importance of AdSense. It is not the end-all beat-all. It will not change your life. It will not be the thing that like skyrockets your income, especially in the beginning. You need to focus on things that are gonna make you money outside of AdSense. And I actually have a ton of videos on this channel on like how to make money outside of AdSense, but the video next week is literally seven ways to make money from YouTube without AdSense. So like completely taking it out of the picture, okay? so. Don't focus so much on that. Focus on making money in other ways. Y'all, this next one's a hard, a hard lesson to learn. It's a hard lesson to learn. And that is to stop trying to be like other YouTubers in your niche. Or honestly, other YouTubers in general. I guess it doesn't have to be in your niche, but stop trying to be like everybody else. They're already doing that. <laughs> like, that's not going to set you apart. That's not going to, you know, make you successful. You need to be you. You need to stop thinking that the key to success on YouTube is to be like so and so. Okay. Yes, they have success on YouTube, but you're different. Okay. You're different. People want different. If people wanted them, they would only watch them. They want something different and you won't go very far if you're not being your true authentic self on the platform and you're actually just trying to be like someone else, you know? All right, we're, we're uh, rounding down the bottom half of this list. Number eight, if I were starting a YouTube channel in 2022 and if I were telling you things you need to know, it would be to heavily, heavily focus on your thumbnails. I think thumbnails are the most overlooked part of someone's YouTube strategy ever, like ever, ever. People think of thumbnails as an afterthought and thumbnails are one of the most important things you can do to be found in search, to get in suggested, to get people to click on your videos. They are so freaking important and they usually tend to be like an afterthought. So make yourself a student of people like myself who are teaching about thumbnail strategy or uh, you know, just YouTubers in general, do a search on YouTube and study their thumbnails, study the top results, see what's working, see what lessons you might be able to learn from that, right? But really put a ton of focus on those thumbnails. If you will do that from the beginning, you're gonna beat like 99% of people because they don't focus on the thumbnails ever, but especially in the beginning. And I can promise you, promise you that it's that important. Number nine, learn how YouTube works. Learn how the algorithm works. Because if you can learn how the algorithm works, then you can learn how to beat it. I don't really like that phrase, like, <laughs> like this is how you beat the algorithm. 
I don't like that because you're 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 not beating it, you're playing with it. You're like becoming teammates with it. It's not like a win situation and you like you beat it and then you never have to do it again. You join hands and you together, <laughs> you know, do the things. But I think so often people just put content on YouTube. They just start the channel, they just do the content, either the content they wanna do or the content they think they should do or whatever, and they never truly take the time to learn how YouTube works, to learn how the algorithm works so that they can learn how to play a better hand. It's kinda like if you are playing poker or my husband's family really likes to play Rook. If you've never played Rook, it's a very fun card game. but they're strategy, they're strategic. They're not just like, oh, you know, hope everything goes right. <laughs> and if you sit down at the table and you don't know the game, you're going to lose, right? But if you sit down and you've studied the game or you've played enough or you've learned from people, then you're going to come to the table with enough knowledge to at least give it a good shot. The same thing goes for learning the YouTube algorithm. Are you ready for number 10? It's a good one. It's a juicy one. Figure out how you can be different and bring something unique to the YouTube table. I know I already said to stop trying to be like everybody else, and this is definitely part of it. But even if you're not trying to be like another creator, we tend to all just kind of do the same thing. Like if you're watching a bunch of, you know, video game YouTubers and you just do the same thing as all those video game YouTubers, you're probably not gonna grow because they're already there. If you wanna get into the education space and you just do the same thing as everybody in the education space, you're not going to be different. You're not gonna be different enough for the algorithm or the people to care about you. So figure out how you can be different. Like, how can you make your videos stand out amongst the competition? And not just your videos, your titles, your thumbnails, uh, like all of it, right? Your personality, everything. How can you, be different. That, my dear, is where the real magic happens. I promise. All right, so if you are looking to start a channel in 2022 or revive a channel you've started in the past, I wanna say good luck. I wanna say that you can do it. I wanna make sure that you understand that you absolutely can do it and you have everything you need at your disposal. And I just gave you 10 things that it took me way too long to learn and that it takes most people way too long to learn. So take everything you can and just do it. Don't sit on it, don't wait another year, don't wait another six months, don't wait until you lose that you know, 15 pounds. Don't wait until you get the best camera. Don't wait until you have it all figured out. Just do it. I, I promise you'll be like, wow, Jessica, thank you for that advice. <laughs> so I'd love for y'all to cheer each other on in the comments. Like if you have a brand new channel, if you have just started in the last few months, like let's say five months or less, go ahead and talk about your channel below. You don't need to post a link to it or anything like that. People can click your name and find your channel. Um, and YouTube's gonna think you're spam if you do that. So go ahead and just tell us about your channel below and let's have a fun little like networking party where we go and find new and uh, up and coming creators that we're going to love to watch. Cause that is a magical place to make that happen. And don't forget to come over to my vlog channel. I've got it linked below in the description and watch my Vlogmas videos. Make sure you come hang out with me there. And until next time, bye y'all.